Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Is it raining? What's up guys, welcome to AB Auto. Now today, we're gonna to be taking an in-depth look at the Thinkware T700 dash cam. Now, what makes this dash cam so special is that it has its own SIM card, which means it can constantly upload to the cloud and send notifications to your phone even while your car is parked. That means this has one of the best parking record setups money can buy. You can connect to it at any time on your phone and view the cameras live. It's such an amazing feature and I'm gonna show you exactly how it works later in this video. Oh, and guys, if you've not seen it already, be sure to check out my full installation video at CBS Automotive after watching this review. If you're looking to have one of these cameras professionally fitted to your car, I highly recommend these guys. First, let's talk about form factor. Now, Thinkware dash cams always look nice and the T700 is no exception. It's very discreet considering how much technology is packed into it. Mine here is hardwired and sits nicely to the left of the mirror. The lens is a nice wide angle, so despite being off center, it still captures a good view of everything in front of the car. There's a microphone here, so it captures audio inside the cabin while recording too. Then to the right, we have our SIM card slot. Then underneath is the micro SD card slot. I like how they've placed this one at the back so it's easy to move the card if you quickly need to transfer some data or just hide it. Say for example, someone crashes into you and then tries to destroy the evidence. That being said though, this camera backs everything up online on the cloud. At the back here, we have the second rear camera. The rear camera is much smaller than the front camera, but it still captures full HD footage. Both of these cameras are hooked up to this external battery here, which has been discreetly installed in the boot. The external battery is an iVolt from Thinkware and it's a really impressive bit of kit. There are a number of advantages to hooking up a dash camera to its own external battery rather than the car's battery. Firstly, you're able to access all the full features of the parking record. Now it's possible to record while parked with the camera hooked up to the car battery, but this is gonna degrade your battery over time, so I really don't recommend it. One warning though, if you're considering an external battery, make sure you go for a battery designed specifically for car dash cameras, such as the Thinkware iVolt. These batteries are designed to run at high and low temperatures and follow a more strict guideline for safety when used in a car. Please don't mistake these for the much cheaper power banks you may use for your phones. This battery is designed to last up to 16 hours, but each time you drive the car, it charges back up again. So you effectively have 24 seven power if you're driving your car daily. Both cameras record at 1080p, which I think is the perfect dash camera resolution. With a high quality sensor, 1080p gives you enough pixels to read number plates without having those huge file sizes, which means you can store and manage more clips. Right, before we check this camera out in action, let me take you through the app and all the settings. Okay, so to access all the settings in the camera, you have to use the Thinkware app. So we're gonna go into the app now. Okay, so on the main menu here, we've got file list, dash cam settings, dash cam info, and connection settings. So file list is gonna bring you up with all the videos that it's captured. So you've got continuous, continuous incident, motion detection, parking incident. It records it all in categories so they're easy to find. But if we go into continuous here, you can see it lists all of our recordings during continuous driving. So you can also isolate it so it just shows only the front camera or the rear camera, or you can show all of them. So if we just click into one of these, around one of these now, it loads for a little while and then you can immediately see the footage of when you've been driving. So if you need to quickly refer to something, it can be a little bit choppy sometimes because it's going over the Wi-Fi. When you download the footage though, it plays absolutely smooth. So this is just a little bit of footage here that was captured the other day. Um, and then yeah, you can pause it, you can forward to the next one. And what you can do if you go back, you can click on this little dot here and you can download the video straight to your phone. So you can download it directly as well. So it's quite a nice way just to quickly grab footage without having to take the micro SD card and put it in your laptop or your computer. So great little feature here, very easy to use. Uh, but if we go back, okay, but what I really wanna show you guys is the dash cam settings. So this is where you can configure, you can configure this thing exactly how you want it. So we're gonna go through every menu very quickly so you can see the customization and the setup process. So memory card settings, pretty easy stuff, you know, just about the memory card. You can format your memory card in here, not super interesting. Camera settings, you can adjust the brightness. I've got it on mid, 
Right, so record settings. This is where you can fully customize it to your liking. So continuous mode incident recording sensitivity. I've got mine set on mid. So there's sensors in the camera and if it detects um, any kind of impact or anything, it's gonna save that clip into a special folder so it doesn't get overwritten. You can set the sensitivity up as much as you want. I've got mine on mid. If you have it too high, if you're driving an AMG like this car here with over 400 horsepower, just accelerating the G-Force can set this thing off. Um, but mid seems to work quite well for me. Then I know, you know, it does put a few clips in there of me going over speed bumps and potholes and stuff. But generally, it's nice to know that it's going to keep that footage safe if anything does happen. Then you've got super night vision. You can have this turned on in continuous mode, parking mode, both, or you can fully disable it. But I would recommend having this on for both. Then you've got privacy recording. I don't use this feature, but I think you can just make it so people can't access the recordings. Parking mode, we've currently got it in time-lapse because I was doing a demo, but you can do time-lapse, energy saving, or motion detection. I'm gonna be showing these features exactly how they work with some real life examples later in this video. Um, I like motion detection, so I'm gonna pop it on motion detection. And then here you've got your impact sensitivities in the parking mode, so you can have that um, on low, high, mid. I tend to keep everything on mid because it's kind of right in the middle off timer is disabled if you want the camera to automatically shut off i don't want that to happen because i have mine hooked up to its own external battery now if you do hook this up to the car's battery you can enable something called battery protection so what this will do is it will shut down the camera once the battery gets to a certain voltage so if you're in the winter for example you could use this if you didn't want to drain your battery too much I still recommend getting a proper external battery because it will all work so much better. But if you do want to have it hooked up to the car battery, you absolutely can. And this is a nice little way of managing it so your battery doesn't go flat in the morning. So that's the dash camera settings. Now we're going to go into road safety settings. So this is some additional settings in the camera. This dash cam does more than just record. It also has some clever stuff in it that can actually help like driver aids. I personally don't use any of these because my car has them built into the actual car. But if your car doesn't, then you can definitely use these in the dash cam. Um, one thing I do use, though, is the speed camera detection. So this is a really nice feature in the dash cam. It has a database of speed camera locations. And basically, if you go into a speed camera zone, the dash camera will actually talk to you and tell you that there's a speed camera. Average speed camera zone. Speed limit is 30 miles per hour. You can also do mobile zone alert, but to be honest, I disabled this because I was constantly getting told I was in a mobile zone and there was never a mobile speed van there. So handy to know the zones, but there's so many zones in this country that the camera was just constantly telling me. So I disabled that feature. Next up is the ADAS features. That's the Advanced Driver Assistance System features. So here you choose your vehicle type. It's American, so it says sedan and not saloon, as we would call it here in the UK. But I have lots of American viewers, so I'm sure you guys will appreciate that. So it actually has a lane departure warning. So if you turn this feature on, the camera will actually use its sensors to detect whether cars are coming um, in the lanes to stop you from pulling out in front of them. That's something my car has anyway, so I don't use this, but that's a really cool feature to have in a dash cam. And it's also got a forward collision warning. So much like the Mercedes system, if you're about to go into something in front of you, it's actually gonna warn you and tell you to brake. So that is the ADAS features. Um, not something you get in all dash cameras, so quite cool to have. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing how these work, let me know and I will test them, but I personally don't use them myself, so I haven't tested them yet. So here we've got system settings. So this is some more detailed in-depth settings. So here you can turn off the assistance systems. Um, some various other bits here as well. You set your speed limit from kilometers to miles per hour. You can have a speed stamp on the recordings. So I personally don't have that. Don't ask me why. <laughs> uh, and then you can change the uh, Wi-Fi band if you're having any issues connecting with your phone. And then voice recording as well is enabled. Right, so that's the app. Now let's go out for a full test drive and see how good the quality is. First, we're gonna go for a drive now during the day so you can see what it's like during the day. And then later on tonight when it's dark, we're gonna go out again so you can see how this camera performs in the dark because it's got super night vision, remember? Then after the night drive, we're gonna be testing all the parking record features of this camera. It's got tons of exciting parking record features as I mentioned. And yeah, we're gonna test them out. By the end of this video, you're gonna know absolutely everything you need to know about this dash cam. Before we go for the drive, we first gotta start this amazing car up. Okay, so here's some footage from the dash camera in action. You can see on the left here we have the front camera, then on the right we have the rear camera. Both of these cameras record in full 1080p HD. 
going full screen now on the front camera, you can see the wide angle lens gives a nice clear view of everything in front of the car. A little bit heavy on the acceleration now and the camera stays nice and stable. You can see here just how quick the CLA45S is from the, both the front and rear view. Now we've skipped ahead a little further onto a dual carriageway here, just to show you how much this nice wide angle lens covers all of the road in front. As you can see, it's not only capturing the two lanes here on the left, but also both lanes on the far right side of the road on this four lane dual carriageway. Now one of the most important things to test on a dash camera is how well it can read number plates. So we're going to do a proper test now. What I'm going to do here is travel at quite a high speed past these cars on the left. Then we're going to freeze the video as I pass to see if it can read the number plates. Let's see if the plates are blurred or if the thinkware is crisp enough to keep up. So as we freeze frame on our first car, we can clearly read the number plate. Next car is looking good too. This van here has the number plate on the left side, so it's a little bit more of a tricky angle, but the number plate is still nice and clear and easy to read. Then just one more car, a small compact car. And just like the rest, the camera's done a great job to capture the number plate. So even as we zoom past at high speeds, very impressive results on the number plate test. Here's now how the camera looks recording some more footage on a back road. Then here's some footage of the camera now recording at low speeds through a village. So overall, looking back through the daytime driving footage, I'm really impressed with how the 1080p camera captures everything with its nice wide angle view. And it's also crisp enough to read number plates, even at high speeds. Right, now it's time to take the car out for a little night drive to see how the camera performs in the dark. This is just gonna be a quick drive, so I'm gonna let you guys sit back and watch. Now it's time to test out the parking record features and the first one we're going to test out is motion sensing. 
What I'm going to do is leave the car parked here, then I'm going to walk up to the car from different directions and we're going to see how quickly the motion sensor picks me up and how much of my activity around the car it manages to record. So we're going to be suspicious, we're going to go hoods up and we're going to walk around the car. Okay, so this is me now approaching the car from the side. We're going to walk around the front and we're going to see if it picks me up from this sort of distance. Looks like it's done a great job and it started recording before I even got into the frame. I'm walking around the entire car now, so let's see if it picks me up at the back too. Yep, there I am, looking very suspicious. Then back to the front again. Looks like it's done a really great job to continually capture everything. So if we take a closer look at the footage now, the motion capture did a fantastic job, but you may notice there's a bit of a dark border around the video. I think this is because it was a really cloudy, murky day and there was a large tree casting a big shadow over the windscreen. The rear camera doesn't seem to be affected by this at all, so I think it was definitely down to the shadow from the tree. Overall, I think the Thinkware motion detection passes the test with flying colours. But how does it work in a real life scenario? Here's some footage that the camera captured in a small car park at my local food shop. Here we have a very cliche BMW driver performing a fantastic park job. In true style, he parks well within his lines. Okay guys, a quiz for you. What do you think this BMW driver is buying? A, a single bottle of beer, or B, some lovely chocolate and flowers for his wife. Time's up, here he comes. Now, if you guessed A, then you are, of course, correct. Before getting into his car, he then steps back to admire his perfect parking job. Then, believe it or not, guys, a few minutes later, a really old age pensioner, bless him, in a Ford Fiesta arrives and performs a perfect park job in the exact same spot, showing the BMW how it's done. So guys, just a little bit of fun there, but really I just wanted to show you when you have this car hooked up to an external battery, you always have a video of everything that's been going on around your car. It's fantastic. It's such a great feature and a good peace of mind when parking in small tight car parks like this one. This camera also features a time-lapse parking record mode. In this mode, the camera records as much footage as possible by stitching thousands of photos together at two frames per second, but it doesn't record audio. Now the benefits of this mode is that it will attempt to record absolutely everything. As you can see here, it actually did a great job capturing everything around my car when I popped into the same shop. Now if one of these drivers hit my car, we would have absolutely everything on video. Okay guys, so early in this video I mentioned that this dash cam has a SIM card in it. What that means is it can save footage directly to the cloud and it can also broadcast footage to your phone at any time. So if you've got it hooked up to a battery here, you can even do what's called live view. So you connect to the dash cam via the app and you can get a live view on your phone of your car while parked at any time. It doesn't matter where you are, you could be on the other side of the world and you could still get this. It's absolutely incredible. So the cloud features are all handled by a separate app called Thinkware Connect. This app is much more visually impressive and also a bit more simple and easier to use. Here you get a nice overview of your car, how long it's been in park mode, the status of the battery, and it will also display any impact notifications. You get this nice little feed on the weather and below you can access GPS data. Here you can look back at your recent drives. It functions a bit like a tracker so you can watch back any of your past routes and journeys. This is particularly helpful if you've taken your car to the dealership for a service and you can see how far they drove it, how fast they drove it, if they did any heavy acceleration, heavy braking, it logs it all. But the main feature of this that I want to show you guys is the live button here. Once pressed you're given the option to live view either the front or rear camera. If I click on the front now you'll see it connects up live to the camera over the SIM card and gives us a really nice clear live view. If an incident does occur, the app will also pop up with a notification on your phone and you'll be able to download the video directly over the cloud onto your phone and view it, no matter where you are in the world. Now, this does, of course, all come at a small cost. Here in the UK, Thinkware have teamed up with Vodafone. The camera comes with a SIM card which has to be activated. Once activated, this costs £3 a month, which, to be honest, I don't think is very bad at all. It's a very small cost for a great feature. For me, the free pound is well worth the peace of mind to know that I can check my car's cameras at any time and will be notified if any incidents occur so I know straight away. So there we have it guys, that is the Thinkware T700 dash cam. That's my full in-depth look and review. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button because it always helps me in the channel out. 
And of course, if you want to see more awesome content with the CLA 45S, other informative videos, Mercedes stuff, it's all good stuff, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all again so much for watching. And of course, if you've got any questions about this dash cam or anything about the CLA, or you just want to say hi, leave a comment and I'll try my very best to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching, guys. See you next time.